learning the lessons from the pandemic and how we will apply them to improving cancer services over the next decade. It will take a far-reaching look at what we want cancer care to be in 2032, 10 years from now, looking at all stages, looking at prevention, looking at diagnosis, looking at vaccines and treatments. Well, I'm joined now by Anna Jewell from the Less Survivable Cancers Task Force and cancer survivor Bryony Thomas. Thank you both for joining me this lunchtime. Uh, Bryony, let's start with you. You were diagnosed with pancreatic cancer, which we know is one of those less survivable cancers, but you were eligible for curative treatment. So just explain a bit what that means and talk us through the treatment that you had. Yes, I was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer in December 2019 when my daughter was just eight years old and I was told I had a 1% chance of seeing her 18th birthday. Mm -hmm. I was one of the just 10%, 90% of people in my shoes are not even offered the operation. Mm -hmm. And that was before the pandemic. And so I can't even imagine what that is now. If 90% of people in my shoes aren't even found soon enough for this one possible curative treatment that there exists for pancreatic cancer, I just can't imagine what the numbers are going to look, up, look like when we, when we look back on this period. It was yeah, already Brian, an emergency. It is, it is. And as I say, we just saw some pictures of you there and being treated. As you say, you were diagnosed pre-pandemic. Um, lots and many people, we've heard 50,000 fewer people have been diagnosed because of the pandemic. I mean, just, just talk us through what getting that treatment, because I know you're, you're on the road to recovery now, aren't you? How are you doing at the moment? It saved your life. Yes, it absolutely saved my mm. life. And, um, you know, there are so few people with pancreatic cancer who even have that opportunity. I had a, a major surgery. It was a 14 hour surgery and then a year of chemotherapy. But the treatments for pancreatic cancer are blunt and there are very few of them, because even though it's heading towards representing nearly a quarter of all, pancreas, uh, all cancer deaths in the UK, it only receives 3% of the research funding. And I might not be a research scientist, but I can see the correlation between no funding and no progress. And there's been no progress in 40 years. So I spent a year having my treatment, having my chemotherapy. I've spent a further year trying to rebuild my life. And my daughter, who's now 10, you know, we're hoping that I'm not going to be in the 75% of people who get recurrence, because although I've been to my doctor for five years, they didn't spot it. And that means my cancer wasn't found before it mm. spread, to, spread to my lymph nodes. And although I'm well now, there's a 75% chance of recurrence and almost nothing to offer me if that happens. Mm. Bryony, thank you for the moment. Um, Anna Jewell, I want to bring you in at this point. Um, we know there's been this huge dip in early diagnosis, in particular for those less survivable uh, cancers. And when you hear the announcement today from the government that there's war on cancer, they've got this 10-year plan, it's all very well and good, isn't it? But there are thousands and thousands of people who need action taken now. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we know that it's devastating if you're diagnosed with one of the less survivable cancers, such as pancreatic cancer, brain, lung or liver cancer. And we need urgent action now to make sure that we're trying to get people diagnosed as quickly as possible, get more people aware of the symptoms of these diseases. And we also need research investment urgently to find better ways, as Barney said, to treat these diseases so that more people can live longer if they're diagnosed with a less Anna, survivable you cancer. Sorry to interrupt, you mentioned the symptoms there of pancreatic cancer. What are they? Uh, so the symptoms are weight loss, um, they can be unexplained weight loss, it can be um, oily floaty poo, bowel symptoms, abdominal pain, um, yellowing of the skin and eyes. So those are not some of the symptoms of pancreatic cancer that we uh, ask people to look out for. And there are other vague symptoms of, of some of the other less survivable cancers, such as headaches and bowel symptoms and abdominal symptoms. And that's one of the challenges of diagnosing these less survivable cancers. And that's why we urgently need investment and ways to find to better detect and diagnose these cancers early when there are still treatment options available. Um, and Anna, finally, I want to ask you about the fact that the Health Secretary mentioned vaccines, potential vaccines that could be used in the future, because this is some kind of hope, isn't it, for the future and how we detect cancer or prevent them altogether? 
It's really critical that we have uh, yeah, research into things like vaccines, into things like immunotherapy, into all kinds of new treatments that can help give better hope for people living for longer with cancer. So we really, you know, welcome the sort of war on cancer, cancer plan being announced today. Um, we, rec- we really welcome the focus on early diagnosis being talked about and a focus on research into new treatments in new innovative ways to treat these diseases, because that's what we urgently need. And in particular, research investment into the less survivable cancers. Well, Anna, thank you. Bryony, just the last word from you, really. Um, you, you managed to get diagnosed, you got your treatment, but for anyone watching at home today, they might recognise some of the symptoms uh, that Anna pointed out there. Your advice to them? Well, I'm encouraging people to have a look for the clue in the loo. You need to look into the toilet and know what healthy poo looks like. And I'm saying that on lunchtime news because it's going to save lives. Doctors need to talk unambiguously and patients with persistent digestive issues need to persist in seeing their GP until they get an answer. Irritable Mm. bowel syndrome and chronic fatigue syndrome are not an answer. If your symptoms persist, persist. Bryony, thank you so much for sharing your story. Anna, thank you to you as well. Thank you both. Thank you.